We're continuing our series of character analysis on our favorite characters in media. First off, we started with Aang from The Last Airbender, then we followed up with Katara, and now we continue with the character with the second most daddy issues in the show, Sokka. I've always gotten shat on for bringing up Sokka as one of the most underrated and best characters in Avatar. I constantly get shat on it for it, and I feel like there's not enough love for him, because yes, he has a lot of negatives, but overall, he is a very, very relatable character, at least to me and to many people who probably watch Avatar. Because he is probably the most insecure person, especially because he can't even bend. In a world where it lives, what, like, majority of the characters we know are benders? It's like, he's insanely secure in that. He doesn't have a father figure. He feels like he's a constant failure. I went back in a lot of episodes and re-listened to a lot of his lines. And there's a lot of lines where he's like, I'm a failure, or I messed up, or I'm no good. He says that a lot about himself. And as someone who has a lot of problem with self-worth and anxiety myself, which is, we're getting a little too close and personal with this one, but I feel a strong connection with that character, which is why I love this character a lot. And I feel like, I feel like I'm not sure how deep this goes, but do you guys have the same defense mechanisms? Um... In what situation? I don't know, man. I, I, he Sokka, out of all the characters in this show, man, Sokka has a lot of defense mechanisms, man. He does. The, I, number one, one, the number one is definitely humor. I was just about to say that. Humor. I was about to say that the one that we definitely relate on is we make jokes when we're very, very stressed out. Like, that's me. I 100% try to make people laugh. Or I laugh myself. I'll make myself laugh. I'm like, ha, ah, everything's fine. And I think Sokka is the same thing. Oh yeah, like the world's burning around me, but it's all good. It's all good. At least I got some heat. I caught a fit. Free heat. Free heat Free. in the winter. <laughs> I think um I think Sokka <laughs> has a lot of positive uh character change in the story. Yeah. But I feel like his is probably the one of the most noticeable ones. Because there's so many After things. Zuko? I'm not saying he's the most, I'm saying he's one of the most. Okay. Yeah. Zuko's up a uh, more present. Yeah, Zuko is so painfully obvious, oh, yeah. dude. <laughs> but he, it's so obvious that Sokka's plagued by loss and securities, and you see that, he, like, he had Suki and his dad remind him that he's more than what he tells himself. And when he when he hears that, it was the first time he starts realizing himself, and he becomes so much more confident to the point where he's coming up with plans on how to defeat the Fire Nation in the last couple episodes, which is why I love this character so much. But that journey to the last couple of episodes, and even still then, is just plagued by defense mechanisms, bro. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. This dude is just a defense mechanism the character. Yeah. Like <laughs> he, he he lost his mom, the same the same mother as Katara, even though this show they really kind of goes like through a different like mom. <laughs> different moms, man. It, 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 it re you really forget sometimes that they're siblings. Because oh, there yeah. are just some episodes that they just don't show that that relationship like that. Like it just seems like the three amigos mm -hmm. but then like sometimes they're like oh snap yeah they're yeah, siblings in there too. I, I forgot you had a mom too that oh. yeah because katara constantly has this trauma from her mom hi, dude. I'm like, dead mom. <laughs> yeah hi, hi yeah hey by the way my name is katara i'm a waterbender i have a dead mother well, i went to your dad listen that's that's Sokka's problem <laughs> that's my brother's problem i have a dead mother did but he hear Sokka me does not give a shit i think but Sokka's it, it's like more obvious that Sokka's is more impacted by the by the loss it's not lost but the he just the dad of his dad yeah the yeah. lack of his dad around him is definitely more effective on his personality because everything he does is i gotta be just like my dad and the water tribe yeah. i gotta be the strong man that guards the tribe like everything which kind of which is an interesting conversation because I really would love to look into that as on uh, how um, more and you don't really see gender roles so much in the nations except for water. the water nation. They're really yeah. the water nation. Yeah. I, I thought that felt weird to say the water tribe. Wow, I thought felt really weird water to say. Nation. I'm so sorry. The, yeah, the water tribe is the one tribe, the one out of the, of the four major bending places mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> that really emphasizes gender roles and i've noticed that like yeah, it's Sokka I, needs to be a leader fire, and katara fire, needs to... yeah yeah and the fire like in the fire uh what's it called they actually say fire, fire nation. nation yeah fire nation yeah the fire, fire nation water tribe fire nation, okay, cool. the fire <laughs> yeah. nation women are strong as shit look at freaking um azula and her gang look at yeah and you know it was so interesting about that is that I thought that Azula, like her dad, Lord Oza, I thought he would have a problem maybe with having a woman as care. the king. He didn't. He didn't care at all. I was eye. like, oh wow, so Fire Nation is really progressive. It's progressive, but 
Us that wouldn't have, they, that King wouldn't King. happen with the water tribe. Look at the Su- Suki and her and her fighters. Earth Kingdom even got it. Like, yeah, like, they, they all like. Also, I read Earth Kingdom, not Nation. That's kind of I'm, I'm piecing now. It's the tribe, Nation, and Kingdom. They're not just all nations. And nomads and nomads. And, and nomads. For yeah, air. yeah, that's yeah. That. But yeah, like I think everyone but the water is very segregated in uh, gender. So good gender. Yeah, point that out. I never really thought of it. Like, and not, I didn't yeah. think of it, but I never really sat down with that and really processed it. Yeah, and you really saw that a lot when they went to the Northern Water Tribe with mm-hmm. Katara. Uh, that, that's when it was really prevalent. But that's so interesting. I, I mean, and that's I, I'm now I'm like kind of piecing it all together right now that that's probably why Sokka wasn't really so impacted by his mother's loss, like the loss of his mother. But Katara was because it's all about men for him. Yeah, she was looking up to her mother as her mother as the main role model in her life, and he was looking up to his father, mm-hmm. but not vice versa, not mm-hmm. not intermingling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. I think uh, I think it definitely explains a lot of uh, his behavior, but I think his insecurities definitely come from uh, more so just not just the whole like I lost a father, but I think it's just lost in general because I feel like he feels like he can't win anything, uh, even when he does. Because I I've listed here everything he does in the show that's actually really good. He he um what's it called? He beat the the owl spirit thing. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah. He beat that thing. He beat Combustion Man with his boomerang. He yeah. can write poetry. Like, he he was almost... <laughs> no, hold on. Time out. Time out. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. That's not, that's, there's something that doesn't match the no, others. No, hold on. But hear me out on this. Madame uh, Mach, Machmu, I think. Madame Machmu, I think, was the was the lady who was really good at poetry. You're talking about that one episode where in Ba Sing Yeah. Ba Sing which was really good yeah. at hype, remember? And yeah. Sokka, who just kind of, like, dabbles in poetry... Almost ran a score on her. Yeah. Remember that? Like everyone's like, "This is yeah. really good shit." But that's what I'm saying. He he has stuff like that in his bag, but he feels like he's always a loser. Like he has clear right. potential to do stuff, and he's able to be persistent fighter. He has talent. Like he has the ability to fucking get woman. He got Suki, but for some reason, no, not only Suki. He got the moon too. I mean, look at the yeah. picture. <laughs> look at the picture. And technically, Toph too. Toph wanted it for a quick second at least oh yeah exactly like he's a very he's a very well-rounded good individual but for some reason constantly just pins on himself and i feel like you see at the end of the show that he starts working with his insecurities instead of against them like instead of instead of keeping up beating up himself he can't bend he accepts he can't bend and thinks if i can make plans and use his boomerang and those only two things i can do what is the most contribution i can do to the team with those two skill sets and he turns out that he can do a lot with that. And it's actually really, really progressive. And I love to see that change in him. Yeah. But that journey still took a still Long took a while. And I mentioned I love that you mentioned the woman. Um I'm I feel like there were two major defense mechanisms in this character that I noticed the most. And obviously humor was one. And we're gonna I wanna get into that. Mm-hmm. But the woman, he was really sexist. Sokka is the most sexist character in the show. Yeah, 100%. And of course, that's definitely probably going back to the Water Tribe yeah, and like and how they are. Mm-hmm. But like, dude, like it, it shows you really see it. You really see his sexism at play the most when because you see Sokka is constantly trying to be that dude that you mentioned. Like he's trying to be that really strong warrior type character. Like he wants to be like his father. He wants to be self-reliant. Mm-hmm. He wants to be like, again, that dude. Mm-hmm. But whenever he sees a woman that is already that woman, mm-hmm. like, that dude, like, he he, he resorts to sexism. No, exactly. He's like, ah, but you're a girl. Like, who, what do you know? Yeah, exactly. Because remember when Suki beat him, he was like, I mean, yeah, you're just a girl anyway, so it's like, it's not even that impressive. No, yeah. Yep, that's exactly. His go-to. And, exactly, it's his go-to. But, like, you know that's something that's, like, bothering him. Like, mm-hmm. he, he he gets bothered that a woman is better than him. Yep. And, I don't, and I don't think necessarily that it's, like, he's – at, at his core, sexist against women. I think it's just more so just he's so insecure about the fact that he can't mm-hmm. be. He's not he that guy him. yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I'm pretty sure if he was that guy, he wouldn't have any issue with women. Suki. No, yeah, women at all. Yeah, yeah. So he'd be like, "Oh damn, Suki got it," mm-hmm. but I'm I got it too, so it's all good. Oh, yeah, I, no, I, I, I got the thing on me too. <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't got that thing on him, so no, like yeah, he's no. super insecure about everything. And I, I think everything. He, it definitely. So I think it goes both ways. Also, I think when males do it too, he also gets mad. But he definitely gets more mad when females do it. For sure, when no, females he, do it, he gets yeah. more mad. But when men also prove to be more uh, persistent and able to fight and bend, he definitely gets mad about it too. 
and you can definitely tell i think i i, I think this is one of my favorite parts of his uh journey is that when he lost princess yue uh he felt like it was a sign that he was not able to protect his friends and mm-hmm. that built on to the whole everyone's better than me so when that happens and you lose princess yue he thinks oh i'm a piece of shit i can't do anything and he even tells suki like i i got episodes he tells suki like i can't do shit i can't protect anybody like even you suki can do better than me and i think that's like at its core like you said that's the real problem it's not that he's sexist but there's the problem where he finally admits he's like everyone's better than me and i don't think i'm good at all it's not even men or women it's just literally i'm just a piece of shit and i think suki yeah. in that episode finally snaps out of him like no like, shut the fuck up like you're fine like don't put yeah. princess yue sacrifice as your own fault and yes once again he's still a little sex don't get that wrong like it's still it's still, it's still there but yeah the main problem is yeah. definitely that he, he's way too fucking hard on himself when he is literally one of the fucking people that saved the world along with Ang and katara let's not even forget that like it's not even just yue it's not even just um suki but he also talks about katara and mm-hmm. remember that one episode that he was talking to Toph. Um, at that waterfall or whatever it was, I forgot what it was, but he, he, Katara overheard them. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he, he was like, "Listen, Katara was like my replacement mother. When my mother left, all I had was Katara." Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, listen, like, just really goes to show that like he's been so reliant on women this entire time, and yet when he is not the one in the caretaker role. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that insecurity comes out because he wants to be that caretaker. He wants to be that man of the house, but he's not. I think he's a perfect. He's just example. a little boy in this teenager's body. Really, I think he's a perfect example of what happens when you just don't have actual parents raising you. He thinks he has to do everything himself. I need to protect the village. I need to protect my friends. I need to protect my sister. I need to do all of this, and no one person can do all of that. But he thinks he yeah. has to, and I think the whole journey in this show is proving to him that it's okay not to be able to do everything you don't have to you have friends for that, that i'm work? reading this book called male versus man by mm-hmm. dondre t whitfield okay and it kind of touches on that too where it's, it was essentially talking about the, how important it is to have a man raising your son mm-hmm. raising a son raising a boy mm-hmm. and not a male it kind of goes into that that difference because a man really is super in tune with his physical his spiritual his emotional and mental health but mm-hmm. a male just a regular male isn't mm-hmm. every man is a male but not every male is a man mm-hmm. and if a boy doesn't have a man as a role model growing up which should be his father mm-hmm. then he sort of then this boy is given what you just said this the title of like man of the house when mm-hmm. he is even finished not with even near, his man. boyhood yeah he's not even finished with his boyhood and a boyhood is a ne- is necessary every single person needs to go through like boyhood, childhood, adolescence, before they go on through that rite of passage where they can become a man. Mm-hmm. But he never went through his rite of passage. Mm-hmm. He was instantly given that title of man of the house, or in this case, man of the village. Yeah, he had a whole at way too young of an age. Yeah, he hasn't even gone through his boyhood yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here, he, and that's why, like, you can see that that's where that sexism traits come out. Mm-hmm. Where like, that's where like all these other negative qualities about Sokka comes out mm-hmm. because he still at really at his core kind of a child mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He, I feel, he hasn't gone through that i feel like the closest thing and you're getting i'm out of pocket i think for saying this but i think the closest character i can relate to Sokka's lack of childhood and the impact this created for him is someone like naruto up to the end of naruto not shepard because shepard gets ridiculous but in naruto you have that same dynamic where you don't have parents and you're just left alone to your own devices and naruto doesn't have that solid foundation of boyhood and has to become essentially a man really quick because he's living alone he has to support himself and achieve his own goals by himself and naruto has so many insecurities because of that whenever sasuke beat him whenever he failed at any test getting into the academy any small little fuck up the dude would get ballistic and be like i'm gonna be the best i'm gonna show everybody i'm gonna be the best he would get immediately- I'm gonna be Hokage. He's like, I'll be he's gonna be Hokage. No, not the best. He just wants to be Hokage, yeah. bro. Well, that, yeah, that's kind of the best. <laughs> but no, Sokka, Sokka has Kage, the same thing. Not play. <laughs> Sokka has the same thing where as soon as something happens that he thinks reflects his insecurities, it's like immediately defense. Like, stop. Like, yo, no, yeah. I'm actually really good. Like, fuck you guys. Yeah, it happens a lot. And I feel like it's very it's rooted in that lack of building blocks in his boyhood, like you said. And Naruto also has a uh, 
a defense mechanism too of a uh, humor. He 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 mm-hmm. goes through humor a lot. Mm-hmm. So it's just really interesting to mention that. I never made that connection, but yeah, they kind of have a lot more than you make you may think in commonalities. Yeah, remember um, he uh, remember he always painted the. Yeah, that was literally the yeah. first episode. That's yeah. the first chapter of the manga. And like you're told, Naruto and you're told like this is not the first time he does it. Like he's been doing this for a long time. Yeah. There's something that I really want to bring up, and I'm sorry, I'm gonna go deep in my bag again what? with a quote. But, you know, you know me, bro. That's the way I roll. Um, okay. I gotta, I gotta, I'm gonna, I'm about to sound really scripted right now, but I gotta. Oh, here we go. So, the sovereign health of California states this. Here we go. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Here we go. Those who, those who have undergone traumatic events of varying degrees typically need time to heal before being able to find humor in their situations. However... As Alex Lickerman, MD of University of Chicago, explains, this coping mechanism can be indicative of psychological recovery also. Uh, Even though it's a defense mechanism to keep an individual from feeling the pain associated with the trigger, it has been found to actually reduce the amount of suffering experienced. It could be that because he jokes around so much, like, those jokes are... I mean, he's not feeling the pain that Katara is feeling Mm -hmm. because those jokes, like his pain may have been like at this level, Mm -hmm. but those jokes really kind of brought him down because that's just the impact of humor as a defense mechanism Mm -hmm. where like it kind of gets you to that point faster in a way. Katara, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. It's been like how many X X amount of years and she's still severely traumatic. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely why Sokka, notice Sokka doesn't make jokes about his dad. Never. Never. It's usually about the like the lack of a mom. He's been like, yeah, I, got, yeah. I don't got a mom, bro. Who cares? I'm yeah, good. He ne- he's never like, oh, my dad left. Isn't that crazy? No, he yeah. never. He whenever, never makes it. Whenever you mention that. his dad, he's like, dad, like he yo, he tenses up. <laughs> Father, <laughs> <Top up? laughs> Yeah, he never makes mom. Mom. <laughs> yeah, His mom was like, <laughs> he I like, didn't even know her. Like, He'd be doing your mom jokes all the time. He definitely would be be, be doing your mom. My jokes. mom. Yeah, like, he would be freaking muscle man from the regular show, bro. I, mean, I don't know. And Katara just in the back, like Sokka. Crying. Why would you do that? Yeah, Katara, is, Katara is like crying, but Sokka is just like making these stupid ass jokes. But that's just both of their defense mechanisms. Yeah. Like Katara is just keeping it all in. Sokka is just like my mom. Like, do you think the way Sokka handles his mom's death is healthy? Compared to Katara, I think it. I think it's healthier. Yeah, but it's Katara. not healthy, right? I don't think it's healthy at all. Well, I, you know what? Out of all the possible things it could have been, it's one of the healthiest. I think. But it's definitely not the best. I feel like he never. He never sat down again. Oh no, he's. With that. He still needs a therapist. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but I still think that like like he's in a much better place than Katara yeah, was, and especially I remember that. That one scene really got to me when there was that one scene towards the end of uh, book three when Katara was kind of going off about her mom. Mm-hmm. And she was going off at Sokka also. And Sokka was like, we have I, the same yeah, mom. Yeah, I have the same mom, dog. Yeah, like we have That's the really same mom. That's really how scene. I'm reacting. It puts into a perspective. It's like, yo, you really think this is about you, but you got to realize like, yeah. we're both going through the same bullshit. Yeah, but the thing is, it's also, but like his calmness in that situation really is indicative of how he was able to deal with it. Mm-hmm. I really do think that while it definitely materialized in other ways, I think that specific situation, though, I think he's in a decent place. I don't think, I don't think when Suki and him got married and lived together, I don't think he's like up at night crying to her yeah, about no, his no, mom. He's definitely not. He's definitely not. Yeah. I Katara, I feel like Aang, Aang and Katara married. I think she's Aang definitely up definitely was making eggs in the morning. She was like, these eggs are just like my mom used to make them. Fucking God. <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, Aang, Aang would not do that no, to me. Was- uh, Aang would still be like, oh, this conversation again for the 400th time. So what happened? <laughs> That's the most passive aggressive way of saying, oh, no, yeah, let's go sit down. Let's sit down for 30,000 times we've done this. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No, no, no. Let me repeat you the same bullshit I tell you every time. And hopefully maybe you'll learn your lesson by now. Go on, please. So my mom died at a really early age. No <laughs> way. Like, really? Mine too. <laughs> and Aang don't care. That's crazy. 
Aang, if, out of all the characters who don't have parents, oh my god, does anyone have a mom in this show except for Toph? Um, God, no. Zuko doesn't have one. Yeah. Toph doesn't have one. Katara doesn't Suki have one. Suki never mentions one. one. Suki never mentions the mom. Everyone has mama issues in this show. You never see Boomy's mom. You never see the Fire Lord's mom. You never see Iroh's mom. There's no yeah. moms in this shit, dude. There's just no yeah. moms. Yeah. Jet doesn't yeah, have a mom. They... Jet's an orphan. Jetson, yeah. <laughs> There's just no parents. And everyone, and everyone who has a dad has daddy issues. Yeah, so. no, every dad's a piece of shit. It's never Sokka's dad. Sokka's dad's a real one. Yeah, but he's still, he, 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 they still had daddy issues, though. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's still a real one. <laughs> yeah, yo, he is. He is. I, I, did you, anyway. I, I felt, um, did you feel like a little bit like, oh, like a little, like happy moment when, um, when Sokka and, and uh, his dad were talking and Sokka was like, I forgot what he said. He said something about like, well, who's gonna do this? And then his dad was like, well, you are, because you're gonna be fighting with us. And then you can yeah. see Sokka's eyes like, I've wanted this forever, and I'm like, yo, I got so hyped for him. It's crazy because you see, back going back to what I was talking about, like the male versus man. I think that was sort of his rite of passage. Actually, that was yeah, it. I think yeah. that was the moment that he's like, I'm a man. That's that's no what he's been asking for for the longest time to fight along with his fellow tribesmen. And the fo- he finally got the opportunity to, and he was like. Let's yep. go, bro. <laughs> Let's yep. go. Now, his character development, just like how you said, like in Naruto, and Naruto, right and Ka- character, his car- Naruto's character development ended right there. when Pain fight. Boy. That's that was Sokka. his character development ended right there. Mm-hmm. Essentially, honestly, after that, he was just kind of just coasting. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think Katara's character development sort of like ended, like kind of went to like a stalemate, pretty much when uh, she found out the truth about her dad. Her. <sighs> Her mom. <laughs> her mom, her mom, her mom, with that, when she ended up defending against that dude, yeah. like Aang didn't finish his character development until the last episode. Yeah, he, until, he, until, he, until he kissed Katara. I mean, uh, Katara. Yeah, it did not end. It was not ending. That was it. That, the, the minute kiss, he finally the kiss, like, all right, now you good, you good now. I'm, like, um, I'm good. All the comics are just filler. This is, a, <laughs> this is the main thing. <laughs> and cut. And that's how you end the show because that's how it ended. That's how you fucking ended. I, just, I, I don't. No, that's really it. I, mean, I think his character boils down to just somebody that grew up without a father figure and a mother figure, but the father figure really impacted him. It created a lot of insecurities that just haunt him like crazy. He thinks he's never good enough, but he thankfully has that positive change throughout the whole story. And you finally see him finally accept who he is in those last couple episodes when they fight the Fire Nation alongside of Suki. So that was a that that was a really good character change, and I love his character for that. Yeah, great character. I always love him. Um... I always love me a good character that you can also point, pinpoint their flaws exactly mm-hmm. um, because it just shows how human they are. Mm-hmm. And yeah, Taka's a fantastic character and kind of sad that he's not really in Korra. I, cu- I couldn't really see much as uh, what happened to him. He would have been a great leader, dude, if they gave him more time in Korra. Like, they could show his leadership. That dude would have been a great yeah. leader. Yeah. Also, but he, looks, he, day, looks, he looks so much better in uh, Korra, too, by the way. Like, they really every, popped him. He's Dominican. <laughs> No, you just thinking about Aang. <laughs> no, Aang is Aang looks Puerto, Puerto Rican. Rican. <laughs> Sokka and Katara. Come on. Especially Sokka's haircut. No, yeah, Sokka's Sokka haircut smoke. is OD Dominican, bro. No, I smoke Sokka in Boston. Right? <laughs> in Boston, you know like, say. Hey, yo, coño, como estamos? Come over here. <laughs> We're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys. Please subscribe. Uh, click that bell. Thank you so much. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Take care. Peace. <laughs>